Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, everybody. Sorry to uh, wake you up violently with Dua Lipa, but this is where we're at. If you didn't need it, you're getting it anyways. I needed it. Never apologize for doing it. Never apologize. This is your uh, trigger music to begin your Salesforce day. Folks, uh, throw into the chat where you're from. We'd love to know where you're from. London. Orlando, okay. That's my neighbor. You guys get to watch Amber dance. <laughs> and Mallory, there we go. 9 a.m. Charlotte, Texas, Roanoke. Hey, Tony. Welcome, welcome. We'll get started in one minute. I got you, moonlight, you're my starlight, I need you all night, come on, dance with me, I'm levitating, I'm fly away with me tonight, all right, folks, if you're joining now, throw your location into the chat, we'll get started here in, uh, like, 30 seconds. All right, welcome everyone. It is Monday morning or maybe afternoon or evening where you are. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are here for the Conducting Stakeholder Interviews as a Salesforce Professional Skills Challenge. And I am Ashlyn King. I'm our head of programs here at Clicked, And we are kicking off our Skills Challenge week this morning. It's going to be a, a wild ride. We're going to be having two Skills Challenges a day, uh, Monday through Thursday. So if you're only signed up for this one, make sure you go to our website and sign up for some more. This uh can be a standalone experience, but these also build on one another. So if you'd like to follow us along for the whole story, please do. So to get started, I'm going to introduce who I have here with me. We have Amber Boaz and Mallory Donahue. Uh, I would love it if you ladies would say just a few words about yourself. Amber, you want to start? Sure, I would love to. Uh, my name is Amber Boaz. I'm in Durham, North Carolina. I am a senior manager of business applications at a company called Red Canary. I have been a sale in the Salesforce ecosystem since 2008. So I've seen some stuff, um, spoken at a bunch of conferences and um, have worked with tiny, tiny organizations and big giant organizations. So uh, I'm also happy to be connected with on LinkedIn uh, because that is a beautiful place, usually. <laughs> <laughs> it sometimes yes usually uh, Mallory, it's a <laughs> Mallory um, LinkedIn LinkedIn is a beautiful place because of people like Amber okay um <laughs> so <laughs> I'm Mallory Donahue I'm a consultant at uh Slalom on the digital engagement team I'm newer to the Salesforce ecosystem so maybe a little closer to some of you clicked uh participants in your journey I just had my one-year anniversary on the digital engagement team so um, I have had the really kind of like unique experience of blending Salesforce with some other skills that are sort of, quote, outside the Salesforce realm, like content creation and conversation design, which is just so much fun. Uh, happy to be here at Clicked with the other amazing coaches and Ashlyn and Jeff, et cetera. So I'm excited to get started. Amazing. Well, we're really happy to have you both here today to help us uh, learn more about conducting stakeholder interviews. So I'm going to go through how we're going to do this, this event today, uh, because it's probably a little different from other events that you have tuned into. 
So we'll start out with a little bit of an overview of what we do here at Clicked and what if you should specifically expect in a skills challenge. Then we're going to jump in and actually role play two stakeholder interviews. One will be with a, an end user and the other will be uh, with a, an event manager uh, for the Dreamforce uh, scenario that we're working with here. Then we will uh, have some time for Amber and Mallory to give feedback to uh, those of you that actually jump up and ask questions in the role play. And then uh, we'll leave a little bit of time at the end for question and answer around uh, interviewing and questions and, and anything that you guys want to know before we close out. So that is the agenda. Let's let's jump in. So clicked. If you have not been to one of our uh, events before, it's, it's a little bit different. Uh, one, we're not here uh, to be lectured at from quote unquote experts. We're here to learn from each other. Mallory and Amber represent two uh, folks that are in the field with a lot of experience and a lot of um, different, uh, you know, roles and spaces in the Salesforce ecosystem under their belt. And so they have some perspective into what this looks like in the real world, which is exactly what we want to give to you. But you are going to learn from each other just as much as you learn from Amber and Mallory. That's really important to us. And so every one of you that raises their hand and comes up on stage today and asks questions you're helping your peers to learn. This is also a safe space. You might be at day one of your Salesforce journey and you might be at day 300 and irregardless, you should get equally, uh, you know, a, an equally um, thrilling experience from this and it should be safe for you to, to make mistakes and fail. And that is totally part of this process is getting feedback and learning. Also have fun. If you didn't notice already, Amber Mallory and I uh, are here to yuck it up and we will do so. And that is part of this, this process. And we hope that you find us amusing. Day one. Okay, Chris, good job. Um, all right, so let's jump in. Uh, you might have read this already on our LMS app.click.com, um, but here is the scenario that we're working with this week. You all, are standing in the shoes this week of a business analyst, Salesforce business analyst working on the digital engagement team for the Dreamforce conference. So uh, we're all going to pretend that you all are working towards putting up this conference that's coming in, what, under a month now. Uh, user research from previous year's conferences has surfaced a need for a conference mobile app. You and your team will be working on an MVP for the app. You will have the chance to interview two stakeholders today, Victoria Petrov, an employee of uh, a prominent consultancy, and a first time attendee of Dreamforce. And then Aaron Chambers, the event manager for Dreamforce. Your goal is to understand the needs of the user and the business for a mobile app. And we want you to specifically focus on the sign up process in the front and back end of the app. Hint, hint. So your task today is to develop well-crafted questions to dig deeper into the problems that uh, are bringing about the need for an app and surface pain points and also understand what the current solutions are. So that's, that's what is the, that's the actual prompt. Anything um, Amber or Mallory you want to point out or highlight here before we uh, jump in? Just real quickly, MVP in this context is minimum viable product. So yeah. we're looking for just the baseline, get the thing working, not any fancy whiz bangs. Yep, that's very helpful. Thank you for defining that. Mallory, anything else that needs to be highlighted here before we go to your tips and tricks? Uh you know, don't get caught up in like, what you know, all the all the design and now we're doing an app, like focus on the user. You just can't go wrong if you just focus on the user right now. Yeah. You know, this uh, chunk it out. This is that's what this this part is about. So don't get overwhelmed by the other stuff, even though it's good context. Yep. That and it was designed helpful. amazingly. <laughs> well, let's that segues us right into our coach tips. Actually, if you didn't notice already, Amber and Mallory are the ones that designed the scenario for you. So uh, 
they they have they're thinking with the end in mind here. Um, so, coach tips. We're about to send you off to think for a few minutes to create your questions, and then you're going to hop up and actually ask questions to these role played characters. So, in preparing for that, uh, Amber and Mallory, what tips can you give to our participants to get as much as they can out of the next hour of their time? Let me jump in here. Um, one of the things that I have found with user interviews is if you can connect with the underlying reason behind something, like what is the, like, why are you trying to do that? Why is that important to you? Um, that will help you design for, that will help you design uh, for solving the problem. Uh, I have never met a user ever a, a, a human being who doesn't think they know how to solve their problems and they come to you with a solution rather than um, a problem. So, so digging for those, um, digging for the why is, is hugely important. Digging for the why. I like that. Mallory, what tips do you have? I can't, I just can't like echo that enough. Like you got to dig, you got to make sure that you um, dig in a way where it's not like obvious that, you're wanting to, you know, set aside that really good idea the user has or something. But yes, the why, <clears throat> the why is just huge. It's it's absolutely huge. I I, I can't say it better than that. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, given that wonderful advice, we are going to pause here for five minutes while you all actually develop questions to ask the two uh, stakeholders here. And I will remind you that the two stakeholders are Victoria, who is uh, a Salesforce consultant attending Dreamforce, the user, also played by Mallory. And then Amber, who is actually playing Aaron, the uh, event manager for Dreamforce. So the person that would be on the back end of the app. So think of questions. You can think about one or both of those interviews. Uh, and while you're doing that, Amber and Mallory and I are just going to continue to talk a little bit about forming interview questions uh, while you're thinking of your questions for the next five minutes. So uh, go ahead, Amber. I was going to say, I think one of the things that um, I have found in interviewing users is um, not only do they have, you know, have a solution in mind, um, and so sometimes talking them down off that particular ledge is useful, but also, you know, just because and we only have two stakeholders in these interviews, but more broadly, you know, there would be dozens, if not hundreds of people who are involved and have a say in what's built here. And so, and so confirming with adjacent stakeholders um, is, is critical to building the right thing. Um, if you build for, you know, if this were real life, if you will, and you built just based on what I tell you as Aaron and just based on what Mallory tells you, you will have made two people happy. Um, and that or is not assuming, like <laughs> or not, right. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, and that's assuming you know you, you know we have been able to articulate what we need and want, and you have the time and resources to build it. So you know, I, I you know, one of the things I, I I've said this several times in in, in clicked um, events is like this is there's no science to this. There is not a way to do it. You know that is perfect and and. Um, you know, if you're doing it differently, you're doing it wrong. This is an art. Um, and, you know, you get better at art with practice. <laughs> That's just. <laughs> yeah, Amber, yeah. Like, I, I think uh, so they're taking their five minutes to come up with questions. Yes. And you have your five minutes to come up with questions like your base questions. But like you probably never, correct me if I'm wrong, Amber, ask the question, get the answer, and then say, okay, moving on to the next question. You want to dig, you know, yeah. dig if you can. Now, you may find there's nothing to dig for sure. You know, it's yeah. possible. Um, but don't say, okay, what now I know we've got limited time, but, <clears throat> you know, ask, try to ask open-ended questions or What's yes. the, don't ask like a yes or no, say, tell me about this. Uh, it might not be a question. It's a request, right? Right. right. Tell me about this process. Um, tell me how you feel about this, that, or the other thing, depending on your, you know, depth of knowledge of the situation coming off. But 
Yeah. So it can be broader view. And then, you know, it's not just a list you tick off and then you may, I have had a list before and then people start talking. I'm like, Oh, look, we're talking about question number six now. Yay. You know, so that's, yeah. that's good. That can happen. Um, that's never linear. It's yeah, never. What, a, what a great call out about how if you only interview one person, because I have definitely had that where I'm like, oh, I was told it works like this and they have to do it like this. I talked to somebody else and they're like, oh, no, that's not right. You know, I yeah. I have different knowledge of the system and it works in this way, you know, so uh, great call out there, Amber. One of the things um, that I find really useful is um telling people, you know, asking for, because very rarely are you in a one-on-one -on -one situation where it's you interviewing a user period paragraph. It's usually in a big room um, with a bunch of people. And so one of the prompts that I give folks is if I handed you a magic wand, what, what would you change about the current process? Right. You can do anything, time and money, no object. We have, you know, unlimited, but we got, we got Bezos money and we got, <laughs> and we got Santa Claus time, right? Like we got nothing but time and money what, you know, what would we, what would we do here? Um, and that really helps folks to unconstrain their thinking. Um, unconstrain, is that a deconstrain? Sure, sure absolutely. <laughs> we're, we're rolling with it. It's Monday morning. Um, <laughs> to unconstrain their thinking, um, you know, in the, in the, you know, in the confines of where, you know, we're, we have to build a mobile app, right? Like, well, what if we built a metaverse and, everybody communicated in Morse code and we all had tentacle arms, right? Like, you know, right. what are the, um, that was, that went way off the rail. Sorry. I love, <laughs> it. I love it. <laughs> um, it's like an so, Oculus app, I think is actually what Victoria is yes. going to be asking for. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get, we'll get you two of those. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we are at the end of your five minutes. You don't have to stop thinking about questions here, uh, but you can you can certainly uh, continue to develop them while you're watching these these interviews start to happen. We're going to move forward into the actual role play piece here. So stepping up to the bat, we have Mallory, a.k.a. Victoria Petrov, who is our user. Um, Victoria works at a prominent consultancy. Uh, but this is her first time at Dreamforce. Uh, so that's, that's an important factor here. And how we're going to do this is anyone who would like to start off uh, with asking questions to Victoria, you're going to use the raise your hand feature. And I'm going to bring you up on stage. You'll ask your question, uh, a follow up if you have one, and then we'll move on to the next person. One piece of advice I can give you all here while you're looking for the raise your hand button is try to work as like a uh, group mind here. I know that there are 30 of you and generally you don't have 30 uh, analysts interviewing one person, but I want you to try to think as if you are a team. So if somebody asks one question, make sure you're listening to that question and building off of it and following uh, a path that is going to uh, help guide the, the, the interview well rather than you know, <clears throat> being like kind of ping pongy. Um, okay, anybody want to raise their hand to kick off our interview here? Who's feeling brave? You got this. No, it's Monday morning. You bite, but unless you no ask me. <laughs> no one here bites. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's all about consent. There we go. All right. <laughs> All right, Sam, welcome to the interview. We're here with Victoria. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Good morning, guys. All right, so the one question I have for you, Amber, is what is the whole goal uh, for your company? Now, for this part, you're interviewing Victoria, me. Oh, yeah, Victoria. And I'm the user. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm not sure how they're going to design it, but I, uh, I'm going to be wanting to manage my dream for his experience and have an amazing time at my first dream force. So do you have any questions for me? So for you, okay. So the, I sell for your first experience, uh, what, you know, what you're planning on talking about, what is going to be your presentation? So, um, I'm not presenting this time. I submitted something, but it was rejected, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. 
first time, you know, it doesn't always get accepted, but I do have some talks that I want to go to. I've been like looking through all the schedules and everything. So I'm, but I'm super excited uh, to see Al Gore. So that's the, that's the presentation I'm most excited about. Um, and I just want to make sure like I'm going there when you go to Dreamforce, when you're a consultant, I don't know if you know this, it's something I just found out, but like you have to represent your consultancy and um, I have to network with clients, but I also really want to see Al Gore. So I just need to make sure that my schedule is like all put together. So that's like my biggest concern right now. That's the biggest concern. That's very cool. That's very cool. Any follow up, Sam? Yeah. And what do you think of the band that they're bringing? You excited about them? Come on. I am. Um, I hope that they wear more than socks. But exactly. um, maybe, not, maybe, maybe that's not actually. A, I hope they just wear socks. So that's. <laughs> <laughs> Which right. one is it? Which one is it? All right. <laughs> Thank you, Thank Sam. Sam. No problem. <laughs> All right. Bring it up, Rosalie, next. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Rosalie. Okay, great. Um, so I, this is kind of a follow-up to what Sam said, but, um, why did you actually decide to sign up for Dreamforce? Um, so I just hear that is this fabulous party, like, you know, the, the stories are legend. I've heard from my friend Amber who works at Salesforce that like just things get wild and <laughs> I'm a huge partier, so I'm excited to do it. But I know that, like everybody also like my people leader and my consultancy was like, Mallory, tone it down. Stop talking about how you want the band to just appear in socks. You need to <laughs> fulfill your obligation. We're paying for you to go to Dreamforce, thousands of dollars. You better make sure to network with clients. Um, and uh, that's um, so that's like what I have to do while I'm there, even though I really just want to party with the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So. And then if you don't mind, I have one follow-up question for you. I know it sounds like you're super excited about going, but are there any concerns you have since this is your very first one yeah i just want to like stay on top of everything make sure i'm going where i need to go like i said there's so much fun stuff to do and i need to make sure i'm also you know representing my consultancy getting to the talks i need to go to i'm supposed to get a certification while i'm there because consultancies want you to get all these certifications um so yeah i just want to stay on top of, of what's going on all right. So I hear you saying you want to stay on top of what's going on. So do you mean like what events are available or yeah, like where yeah. to go? Uh huh. Where to go, when to be there, what I've signed up for, like what if I want to change what I've signed up for? I've heard that like, you know, sometimes the speakers are billed and you're like, oh, that's not going to be exciting. And then you hear from other people, oh, I attended this session, like you got to go or, you know, I uh, so I just want to make sure it's easy to do all of that. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other questions, Rosalie? I think I'm good. All right. Thank you. I'm waiting for another hand to come up here. I'll ask a question for Victoria. Victoria, uh, are you uh, local to the Dreamforce event area or are you going to be traveling? Um, I'm going to be traveling from Columbia, Missouri. So I am just like super new to metropolitan areas on the coast. Like, I don't know. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm just wondering if there's going to be a Cracker Barrel there. Uh, I just, <laughs> uh, I really, you yeah. know, I bet that like a Cracker Barrel in California is way better than one in Missouri. So our poor friends in London Probably. have no clue what you're talking about, but that's uh, hysterical. <laughs> uh, and what, um, you know, you're, you're going to this event that you're traveling to. I imagine you're staying nearby. What do you plan to actually take with you when you go into the conference? Well, I guess I got to make sure and, like, take my laptop um, because that's the only way I know to, like, look at my schedule, change my schedule. Um, I have a really nice laptop provided to me from my consultancy, uh, but it's kind of big and I love that for work, but I'm like, okay, I just have to buy like the coolest backpack um, to be able to carry this around and, and not get anything, you know, not lose it. Um, I was in a security training where it said to like, 
you know, chain your laptop to a column in a building if you were ever going to like leave it or something like that. So I just, you know, there's some security concerns there. And then um, also uh, just, yeah, I guess I'm going to be carrying around my big old laptop and like maybe a bottle of water. So, okay. Got it. Um, bring up Tanya here for our next question. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Tanya. Hi. I actually have a follow-up to Ashley's question. Um, awesome. If you're going to be bringing in your laptop, what about mobile devices? What types of mobile devices? Yeah, so I will have I will have my phone with me, of course. Um, I'll have my phone with me to like be, you know, keeping in touch with my friends at Dreamforce. And then, you know, I've got family back home. So I'll need to, you know, probably FaceTime somebody from like the Salesforce rave in order to do bedtime. And, uh, you know, uh, so I'll have my phone with me. And, uh, but, you know, yeah, so I'll, so I'll have I'll have that on me. I don't think I'll bring my iPad, but I, I am definitely gonna have my phone and my computer. Okay. And any follow ups? Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. The question ahead. I had is, can you tell us what your top three um, things that you would like to get out of an app? Like what kind of app? So if you if you have a map, I'm mean, an app to use for Dreamforce. If you had, if you oh. could dream and there was an app that you could use to help you, you mentioned about navigating um, around the event and knowing what is going on. So could you, if you had an app in your perfect world, what are the top three things that you would like to be able to do within that app? Um, I went, so if I could have an app on my phone, that would just be so cool. Um, I would want the app to help me get places on time, help me uh, remember like, and you know, maybe even like, there are some things that are optional and some things that I, I could go to. So I just really want it to help me manage my time at Dreamforce so I don't make anybody mad uh, at my company and I get to come next year. And um, what else? I, I just want to see the schedule. I want to make sure that I get to where I need to go. I don't know if there are any specific features that I can come up with off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, maybe even being able to figure out where the nearest Cracker Barrel is would, would be cool. So. Okay, that was actually going to be my follow-up question. If you <laughs> wanted to be able to know what is in the area outside of uh, Dreamforce. I mean, that could be cool. Um, as, you know, I but I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not sure because it's my first time. So um, if that would help me to make sure I'm networking with clients and make sure I'm, you know, getting to all my stuff on time. Yes, I think so. But I just I just don't know yet. OK, thank you very much. Uh -huh. Thanks, Tanya. You're Bringing welcome. Rosalie back up. Hi. Yeah. So I was wondering, have you ever been to any other Salesforce related events before? Um, no, I haven't. So it's my first year in the Salesforce ecosystem coming off of COVID. Mm -hmm. And so I haven't actually gotten to go uh, to any other events. So this is going to be just like super exciting for me. Great. Okay. And have you ever been to any other like professional conferences at all, even if it's outside of Salesforce? Yes, I have. So I used to sell sewing machines and I have gone to um, a professional conference for sewing machine dealerships from the time I was like 15 to 28. So I've been to those professional conferences with so much fun. I love the classes. I love going to school basically. Um, so that was super fun. Now that was a while ago. I was 15 and like the 2000s or something uh so uh that was a while ago like i love getting like the id badge um being able to go around and, and talk with people um i do remember sometimes the coolest things that would happen though were like 
not the scheduled things. It would be like mm. the person I met that I got to talk to uh, and, um, you know, hang out with and eat dinner with and, and learn something from. So it's like, I'm, I just imagine that with all the magic of the Salesforce ecosystem that I'm going to have like just a fabulous time. And I want to make sure that I can have those experiences. I hope I meet Amber there too. Hmm, that's interesting. Would it be there. helpful to find have a way to see um, who was attending or maybe like in your proximity while you were there? That would be super cool. So like I yeah. love stalking people on social media in the first place. Um, so if there was a cool way to network, you know, like that, like if you wanted to opt in and be like, hey, get at me, you know, I'm, I'm here. Uh, that would be super neat. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you. You even like a swiping Thanks, feature. Thanks, Rosalie. <laughs> All right. Uh, Camille. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, Victoria. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. Good. Good to hear. I see that you, following up on, on Rosalie's question, you've gone to sewing machine conventions and you've been going for quite some time. Is there an event app that you've used that you really like? No, because that was so long ago. And so the the thing that stressed me out so much at those events, and so I'm glad you asked about this, it bringing a picture into my brain, we would have this fold out like cardstock schedule, okay, that was printed with every event, okay? And then obviously they had paid some poor employee to star all of the sessions that I had signed up for. So there was a sticker on there. And I would look at those and I'd be like, okay, I need to be in ballroom E and then I need to be in ballroom A and then I need to be here. And I would think I had my, you know, schedule down. And then I'd look and I would have gotten confused because actually on this page, they had something divided out funny. And it was in some weird room that was actually on this floor you can only get to in a certain escalator. So those, I wish there had been an app. If there had been an app where I could get like a more focused view of what I needed to do, because that was so confusing to me. That's, that's, thanks for asking that. Okay. And just as a quick follow-up, because it sounds like you're looking forward to ease of use and convenience, and you want something to facilitate your movement during the event. How do you feel about a social element within an app? Meaning you can network through it, you can arrange meetings through it, and you, know, you can maybe meet Amber for cocktails. I love that idea. Like okay. making a space for those, you know, somewhat spontaneous things. Like if, if there was a way to do that, I think that would just be like really fun. Um, and doing it like, you know, without leaving my schedule, you know, being able to make sure I'm, you know, going everywhere I need to be. That's so great. Awesome. Well, we'll do our best to make sure that you don't have to lug your laptop everywhere. Thank you, Camille. You're very welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Camille. Um, we're uh, at time for Victoria here. So Amber and Mallory are clicked coaches. What feedback can you all give to the folks that just asked questions to Victoria, our end user, uh, Salesforce conference attendee? Users are normally not that fun. I just want to say, like, you got <laughs> yeah, to bring them out of their shells sometimes. Um sure. Uh, I mean, I was being kind of funny, but also, I mean, actually I did go to sewing machine sales conventions from the time I was 15 to 28. So that was not a lie. Yeah, that, was, that was too specific for you to have made. Yeah, it, that was so. way too specific to be uh, fake. Yeah. Uh, I loved the questions like Camille's last question about what did you do there? Um, was really good. And it truly did make me remember those cardboard cutout, like whatever things. So like, Talking about current state versus future is good. I know it's my first time at Dreamforce, so that can get a little hard there, right? Um, but like talking about the now helps you to move into the future, right? Amber, is is that? Yeah. I find that. Yes. What you don't want to do, however, is make, is solve this is that, that magic wand thing, right? What you don't want to do is, is solve for the problems with the current system without thinking about what is possible 
in the like in the future, right? So the question about, you know, hey, do you think about a mobile app? And Victoria was like, oh, huh, that'd be really cool, right? So solving the problem in a different way, um, you know, going sideways with it, right? Like we know this is the point of this is a mobile app, but like Victoria doesn't know that. And so, you know, thinking about things kind of adjacent to where where the line of questioning is going is, is helpful. Um, the follow-up questions y'all asked were fantastic. I really, that was, that was super useful. Um, and you, you built on each other, which was really cool. Yeah. Um, really, really good follow-up. Like that's where the magic was. And like part of yeah. this art that Amber is talking about is getting people to sort of come out of their shell, building trust with them. I know I was, you know, I was being a little silly, um, but I have actually, like, that's some feedback I've received at work. They're like, oh my gosh, people just talk and talk and talk to Mallory. Like, they will, you know, really open up and she builds trust with them. Uh, and, and I'm proud of that feedback. And so you sort of need to put on your, like, acting hat or, like, your, your, if you've ever been in customer service or been in like the, the service industry, like it's almost your questions aren't just information gathering. They're creating a space of comfort. They're creating a space of exchange. And once you get that flowing, it's like, well, I'm going to make sure and ask how they process cases or something. But once you get that flowing, the information is, is so good. And you do that with, with many people. So the questions are instruments in more than one way. Uh, Amber and Mallory, were there questions that you would have liked to have heard that uh, to help better understand the current state for the user? Or in this case, you know, she's this is her first time attending, so uh, the user's concerns or, or uh, you know, all of that mental state. The stuff around security, I think that was an opening um, that that folks didn't quite hone in on. If we had more time. I would have hoped to see more around security just because, you know, Mallory made it really clear that she's got to, you know, deadbolt her, her hotel room door and attach her laptop physically to her body because that's a requirement of her company. So, you know, what other security pieces are important to her and or her company um, would have been a, a great, that, that would be a great follow on trail, right? Like heading down that rabbit hole of, okay, so talk to me more about, you know, what you are and are not allowed to do and, and, you know, what are the implications of, you know, what would happen if your laptop was stolen or, you know, those kinds of things would be, um, that's another useful rabbit hole to head down. I think another rabbit hole basically, you know, that you could go down is um, people are asking about, I think it's Sam's like first question about like, am I speaking? So I'm not speaking, but I was attending and you could say, well, what are the things you have to attend? Cause I, I think I got that across that there was stuff I really had to make sure and do, you know, in order to fulfill my obligations. So I think we could have asked about um, what are these specific things? Um, you know, are they big events? Are they smaller sessions? Are they outside events? Things like that. So things that would get into the priorities of this user, yeah, right? The, okay. Yeah. Get, getting those priorities a little more smoothed out. So. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Thank you all for starting us off there. We're actually going to shift now into our second interview, which is with Aaron Chambers. Remember, Aaron Chambers is the event manager for Dreamforce. So, you know, Aaron knows about past years at Dreamforce. She knows wh what's been working. She knows what's not been working. She knows what she needs. And she has this user research telling her, uh, we, we think we need an app. Um, so we're going to interview Aaron to see what the business needs are for, um, for uh, Salesforce and for Dreamforce. Um, so let's into character, shift into character. Anybody want to raise their hand to ask Aaron Chambers questions for the stakeholder interview? I'm very busy. Come on, people. <laughs> Don't, don't make your client mad. <laughs> uh, I'll kick us off here. Aaron, uh, we're, you know, a, f like a few weeks away from, from Dreamforce here. What is top of mind for you right now? Crowd control. 
Uh, I'm not entirely sure how many humans are going to be in which places at which, which times. And I've got the fire marshal breathing down my neck. And I need to make sure that the crowds are managed and um, that it's uh, or it's that it's a transparently organized chaos. The attendees don't need to know what chaos is happening, but I got to know where humans are going to be and when. And how do you like that information served to you currently, Amber? So currently it's in a spreadsheet, which is a gigantic nightmare. Uh, so ideally, I would only hear about exceptions, um, you know, where it's it's too many or too few um, so that I can juggle rooms. Um, you know, I just, I need to be able to smooth the traffic, if you will. Uh, I don't need to see the whole, I mean, if I wanted to, I could go dig in and see, you know, how many people are in X room at Y time. But um, I, the, managing the exceptions is the most important thing. Bringing up Sam here. Hey, Sam. Well, hello. Uh, so the question I have for you is, is this the biggest event you've had? Because I know Dreamforce is huge. Or have you done within similar um, size? Um, they tend to grow, uh, you know, 5% a year. So they're similar size, but growing. Okay. And uh, have you always been doing it for the Dream, uh, you know, Dream that at Salesforce, or have you done something outside, different companies, different I've corporations? Done, yeah, I've done different different corporations. I'm a corporate events person. That's my career. Uh, and so I've done them at other corporations, never at this scale, never at this size. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've been doing this my whole career. Sure. And can you explain what was the, uh, one of your favorite things about organizing stuff like that? And what's some concerns you have about that? Yeah, favorite thing, um, uh, you know, folks, it's, you know, one of the things that uh, you heard Aaron say, or I'm sorry, I'm Aaron, uh, you heard Victoria say was it's a giant party. That's my goal. I want people to come away from these events having learned something and had a great time. Uh, so my favorite thing is when folks, you know, have learned something and, and had a great time. Um, and you had a second question, sorry. Uh, what concerns do you have about events like this? The, the number of humans. We're bringing a huge number of humans into a single place, and it turns out uh, global pandemics are a thing now, uh, and fire marshals have always been a thing. And I need to know I need to know where people are and what they're doing. I need to be able to you know move folks from point A to point B easily. And security is another concern you do have there. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Yep. And, and do you have the support of the town for you know uh, the forces to be available? Any help? Any concerns? Uh, that's uh, uh, like support you do have. Yep, we have that absolutely. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for answering. Sure. Thanks, Sam. All right. Bring it up. What you got, Camille? Camille? What are, what, can you talk to me about what some other functions aside from crowd control you'd like to see in, in the solution? Yeah, so I, uh, in, in years past, I spend most of my time helping users, right? So helping them, you know, where is this building? You know, I can't sign up for this session. I, you know, it's, it's you know, I lost my laptop. I stubbed my toe, I, you know, helping people with the stuff that, I mean, you can't build an app to help fix people stubbing their toe, but you could send them to the first aid station so that I don't have to deal with it. That would be awesome. Right. Um, so, you know, getting folks information that they need, uh, without having to come to me and my team so that we can solve the bigger problems. We need to, you know, interface with the fire marshal. We need to interface with the bus, uh, the, you know, the logistics folks who are moving people around. We need to do the bigger picture stuff and the, you know, hey, you know, room 8742, you know, the AC isn't working. Like that's a thing that someone else needs to deal with. Um, and so having, you know, routing things to the right place, uh, routing issues to the right place and, and, and crowd control. Okay. And just as a small follow-up, um, I know you were concerned about crowd control and capacity. Would it be, would, you know, a possible solution to that be like a room capacity cap? Absolutely. Built yeah, into no the app that way it would cut off registration at a hundred sure. if that's all that could fit in a room. Absolutely. Yeah. Knowing, okay. you know, knowing how many folks, right. So let's pretend, you know, 150 errands want to come to my, or sorry, I'm Aaron. Sorry. Uh, 150 <laughs> Victorias want to come to, you know, this session in the room only holds 80 people. Yeah. I need to cap it at that first 80. Um, but also offer a way for those other folks to 
to be in line or to be, um, you know, uh, uh, on a wait list. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I, and I also need to be able to report on this stuff, right. To be able to tell the fire marshal, you know, Hey, we're, you know, if there's a bunch of folks standing in the back of the room, I need to know how many people are standing in the back of the room. Right. Correct. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks so much for your time, Erin. Thank you. Thanks, Camille. Erin, uh, uh, how are you you currently um, capping those those uh, those room numbers? In so the uh, poorly. <laughs> um, so right now there's a there's a room attendant in every room, and in theory they are supposed to know how many people are allowed in and counting noses. Um, but you know that's. <sighs> And then, you know, there's not really a good way for them to escalate when that isn't, you know, when, you know, that 101st person walks into that 100 room, 100 person room, right? You know, and, and coming and going and what happens when the room has two doors and you got to coordinate, like, it's just a mess. Um, you know, so, I, you know, there's not a, right now we're doing it poorly. What are some specific, oh, zombies. I don't have to make a question right now because we're bringing up Tanya. Okay. Oh, great. Hey, Tanya. Um, you said that there is usually a room attendee in the room keeping headcount. Do you, um, I'm trying not to ask this as a yes or no question. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what are your thoughts about having a scannable, so if someone, if the room attendee has some way to scan those who have registered for the that particular. Oh, that'd be cool. And then we know if they were like coming and going. They're supposed to be there or not. And you would know that if you have hit your cap, how, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that'd be cool. That would, and to be super clear, it's not attendees who are manning the rooms, it's paid contractors. So if I could have fewer of those and we had some sort of scanning mechanism, that would be amazeballs. Um, that would free me up to, to network with folks and, um, you know, spend time with clients, not, you know, running from room to room, making sure we don't have too many humans. Right. And I, um, I would think that that would also help you with your reporting that you're. Absolutely. Yeah. That'd be huge. Okay. And, um, this is an assumption I'm making. Tell me if I'm wrong or not. I, in the past with Dreamforce, I assume you have surveyed attendees after the event, correct? Yep. Okay. Can you mention to us top three um, pain points that you have gotten out of those surveys? Sure. Uh, one of the one of the big ones is folks, you know, don't want to lug their laptops around, and so having having a mobile app uh, is important. That's why we're here. Um, another piece is getting help with issues. Um, you know, right now there's we have a help desk, but you've got to come to the help desk and stand in line and. Um, you know, that's not scalable. And then we have multiple help desks and what happens when, you know, also we get, you know, we get the same, you know, 50 questions over and over again, you know, you know, where's the bathroom, where's the lost and found, right? If I could put that in a place that everybody can get to, a human doesn't have to answer that question. Um, and then kind of third for me is, you know, I need to know the types of attendees, you know, how many customers do we have? How many partner you know, folks from partners, do we have how many employees are attending different things? Um, it may be that I need to move employees around. I need to, you know, incentivize partners to be in different places. Um, I haven't quite figured out how to incentivize partners yet, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, so not, not just number of noses, but the, the, the makeup of the noses, the split of the noses, the types of noses. I'm not sure how to, how to explain that well, but, um, you know, needing to know, you know, where, you know, maybe there's a session that only partners have signed up for. I need to know that um, so that I can incentivize customers to be there too, or to, you know, maybe that's a session for partners only. So I need to make sure customers can't sign up for it. You know, those kinds of things are all things I need to do. Okay. Some kind of way to segment the the Yeah, absolutely. Audience. Yep. Okay. All right. And then on the flip side of that, what are in the survey from the feedback, what are top three things that past attendees said, yes, keep doing this? Um, so maybe that's something that we can incorporate into the app. 
Yeah, keep doing. Um, folks do like that they can see what sessions are available. Um, you know, available right now is everything because there's no like signing in or signing up for. Um, folks have been pretty pleased with our help desk. Um, you know, aside from the fact that they have to wait in line and there's only a couple of them spread around the campus, um, you know, they get the answers they need and they move on. But again, it's, you know, it's a volume thing, right? If I can have, um, you know, an FAQ, I don't have to answer those questions over and over again. Um, what other things have folks really liked? I mean, those are the, those are the big things. Um, I can't think of a third thing. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we can take one last question. Anybody want to end our questions here with Aaron Chambers of Dreamforce? For what All it's right. worth, folks, I would really like this app to save me some time so that I can go have beverages. I don't want to have to run around like a chicken with my head cut off. I want to play too. And see Al Gore. And see Al Gore see Al and go Gore. to the Cracker Barrel with Victoria. Yeah, with, with me. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. too much. <laughs> uh, Sam, yes. How can you, can you close out this interview for us? Yes, absolutely. So the, you know, and it works perfect. My question is part of the last question that I have is, uh, so if I attend and I really enjoy all the security features, all that you guys have done, but uh, I've experienced a thing or two where I can uh, provide feedback to improve for next uh, year's event. Is there a place for us to give you those recommendations or have some Q and A or feedback where we can say, Hey, listen, uh, you know, like uh, the other candidate asked where there's a scan where we can use our phone or there's a, you know, how most places um, uh, uh, they go and they have the name tags on where we can scan those name tags. It has a QR code that tells us, OK, he went to this event. He went to this event. He went there. Is there a place for us to to do to how do you say put those recommendations or Q&A? Yeah, absolutely. When we survey users at the end of the event. We ask them all those questions. You know, what did you like? What did you not like? What would you do differently next year? Um, yeah, we we ask, we survey at every session about the session, and then at the end of the event about the event as a whole. Um, shocking no one, everybody really gives good uh, thumbs up and great feedback about the band. So that works out well for me. <laughs> good, good. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate all the answers. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sam. Uh, out of character, we have uh, Mallory and Amber here with us. What feedback can you give that last group of folks on their questions for this stakeholder interview with Aaron? Y'all are getting better at this with practice because it's art. And the more you practice, the better you get at it. Um. <laughs> yeah, there was a progression, like even from the right, the first questions, like, yes, absolutely. I totally agree, Amber. Yeah, I think, you know, I think sometimes it, it, one of the things I want to absolutely point out is just because you've interviewed a user doesn't mean you've checked that box and you never talk to them again, right? Like, you know, going back and confirming what Victoria said or what Aaron said with Victoria and vice versa. So it's an iterative process. Um, and and y'all absolutely did some of that. You know, what, what did your attendees say in your survey, right? Um, you know, you're confirming with the event manager what it is that past attendees have had to say. And that's, that's super important. So great work there. Yeah. Oh, no, go sorry, ahead. Go nope. It's all you. Well, I tell if this goes off the rails a little bit too much, I think something that I, as a newer, you know, someone newer to the Salesforce consulting space um, was really surprised about. This is different from other work I've done. Like you said, it's an iterative process. You keep collaborating, you keep talking like, we embed ourselves almost within a part of the organization as consultants, as business analysts, in order to understand. So this isn't something you necessarily should have done, but you could always end a session like this as if you think of something else, email me or we've been using this collaborative tool together to list out to mind map or whatever. Please add to it and you'll talk to them again um, and like you said, it's iterative. You're not actually expected to get the, you know, deliverable, like right off the bat. Um, and that was just surprising to me because I guess in other work I've done for people, 
you know, on less of a consulting scale, more of like a contractor scale, it was like, boom, get this one thing done, right? Amber, like bringing up that uh, collaboration is so huge. I just, it's almost a, a little bit tangential to the actual stakeholder interview that I think is a really great thing that you brought up, Amber, that surprised me as I broke into this world. The fact that we were able to get into the business more and be like part of it. Um, yeah. yeah. Yep. And folks, you know, once, when you start asking them questions, they, they, especially if your, your follow-up questions are super tight and on, you know, on that same theme, folks get real, they, they trust you. And when they trust you, they volunteer stuff that they may not volunteer. Wow. Might not. I got my braces tightened last week, y'all. It's rough. Uh, <laughs> might not, um, con, you know, confess or confide in, in, in someone else. And so as a consultant, again, embedded to Mallory's point in a, in a business, you learn a lot about that business. Um, and that's also true if you're if you're on the customer side or ISV world, right? You learn you learn a lot about people and how they think and what they prioritize and and et cetera. And so that and that's a position of of you know kind of like with great power comes great responsibility, right? You really can um, you can do a lot with that for, for good or for evil. Don't use your skills for evil. I have one more thing to add that maybe it could be a point of clarity. So when doing, and Amber, correct me if I'm wrong or elaborate on this, please. When you're interviewing the user, I would like keep things broad and get into that, you know, experience more. Um, when you are interviewing someone like Aaron, who's working at the company, they may know, yeah, we're making a mobile app. You know, like this is what we contracted for. Like this will be the deliverable. Like, you know, Aaron over there on on the company side and not that end end user side. It's okay to jump in a little bit more specifically. Okay, don't solution in the interview. Don't solution. Actually, that was one of the first things someone said to me at my job was like, never solution in front of the client is what, I don't know if Amber, you agree with that or not. Um, but like, don't, don't solution there, get her experience, get that. But like, it is okay to be like mobile app or have you ever deployed a mobile app and you're, you know, you, you could get a little bit more like deliverable specific with that type of person. Amber, how do you feel about that? Is that Yeah, possible? I agree. I, I think, um, yeah, Victoria doesn't have any idea that a mobile app is in the offing. You're just talking to her. Whereas Erin, again, she's contracted with, you know, our clicked friends to bring a mobile app to market. And so, yeah, to, to Mallory's point asking, as far as not solutioning in front of a client, I think definitely not in the first few meetings, but once you've established some of that trust and some of that baseline kind of, you know, okay, we've got some shared understanding of what we're doing here. Let's talk through the pros and cons of this architecture over that architecture. I think that's when, you know, you can get further in, but absolutely in those first meetings, yeah, solutioning and, you know, with a client, like you're just, it's too early. Not only is it, is it not necessarily appropriate in that meeting, it's just way too early in the process. You don't know enough. You're going to yeah. back yourself into an architectural corner and then you're hosed. So, yeah. So last last question for for you ladies, um, knowing that in the prompt we uh, we were saying specifically ask questions about the sign in and sign or the sign up process. What were some questions that you might have liked to hear to help us get a picture of of that? Um, how we might start to build that out? Yeah, that's part of that security conversation, right? Like you know what what is what needs what of your attendee information needs to be secure. Um, you know, given that Mallory's coming to this conference and is going to have to padlock her laptop to a pole, what what information about her should not get out? Um, you know, and what information should we capture should be captured at sign up? Right. You know, we need to know she's a partner. We need to know, I'm assuming her name and email address at a minimum. But what other information would be useful? You know, what kind of you know, she needs vegetarian meals and she, you know, uh, what are her pronouns and et cetera, et cetera. So those kinds of things are things that, um, you know, are useful, but maybe not required to be captured at, at sign up and then logging in, right? The number of, I'm gonna put on my Aaron face for a second, the number of times we have to spend, you know, helping people log back into the app, we can't have that. Like it needs to be super idiot proof, so. And it, you know, you could ask, I think that those would be big questions like for Aaron. I think over on the Victoria side, you could be like, 
do you, you know, hey, could you forward me some of your company's security policies? Or do you know that there's, <clears throat> do you know if your company has a policy for, um, uh, you know, uh, sharing information or, uh, about like your attendance or something like that? Or who could I talk to your company? Who could I talk to at your company about like single sign on? Whoa. You know, like, <laughs> Could, could, yeah. uh, like if, yeah, if you could just use your, you know, my yeah. consultant login, you know, do that, that would be super cool. Um, those are some things that, and if someone ever does do that to you in an interview, if they're like, well, I don't know about our security policy, be like, oh, you know, I'm going to follow up with you to figure out who, who I should talk to about that. They would be like, yes, oh gosh, I'm going to like Google or, you know, look in my company you know, directory and be like, talk to this person in IT, you know, that's okay to do as well. Amazing. Well, thank you so much to Amber and Mallory, aka Aaron and Victoria. This has been so helpful. I hope you all have learned something about stakeholder interviews. Thanks to everybody who stepped up and asked a question. You all did great. And we watched you learn throughout the session. Please jump into the survey that I pinned in the chat. I'll also put it in the Slack channel. And let us know how this was for you. Uh, and you can show me how uh, much you enjoyed it by coming to other events this week. We'd love to see you there. Uh, thank you, guys. Thanks, Amber and Mallory. And we will see you next time. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Thank you.